Thank you, thank you. I'll be your host on the Daily Game. My name is Pastor Andre. And uh, today we're going to be dealing with relationships, dating. So I uh, wanted to try a little spin with Tim's help. Thank you, Tim. Let's give Tim a round of applause for that set up there. Uh, okay, so here we go. Welcome to the river. Today, uh, bulletins. Any of the bulletins? Please take bulletins. They do apply. If you're single, and if you're not single, still take some bulletins so you can write some notes. Uh, if you know somebody that's single, dating, this is a great idea to be able to sow a seed in their life with the word. Amen? Amen. All right, so you know we're continuing our relationship on God, our, uh, on God direction called relationships. Um, and as you can tell from the topic, it's the dating game. So with this series, and I think everyone knows, we asked our congregation... I think every know, everyone knows, yes, we asked our congregation about what area of life was the Bible not the final authority, and this is one of them. So a couple weeks ago, Pastor Timberley addressed the ladies on the way they should carry themselves. Remember that? And uh, why it was so important and why God asked us to wait to have sexual relationships, sexual activity, until we were what? What, what, what was that? Amen. Amen. So we're all on the same page. So today I want to address the conduct and the way that men should carry themselves and give them some thank you, thank you, and give them some guidelines that they can use, the men that are here. And again, this applies to everyone, but specifically to the men that are dating, because Timothy dealt with it a couple weeks ago where the women were concerned. So today we're going to deal with the men. Amen? Men, whether you're single or married, this will still help you because you're going to be able to sow a seed to someone else and set that example. Amen? All right, so uh, we're going to do a redo from last week. So stand up, grab your Bibles. I was a little fast last time. If you, your iPhones, your Androids that have the apps, if you don't have a Bible, touch Norca's Bible. Amen. There we go. Are you ready? This is my Bible. This is God speaking to me. My eyes are open. My heart is prepared to receive all of God's promises and instructions. Today, I make my Bible the final authority in my life so that in every circumstance, I will bear good fruit and others will see Christ in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, that was a good redo? Yeah. All right. So before we start talking about dating, let's establish some ground rules here for the men. Typically, when a man meets a young lady or a woman that they're attracted to, they pursue them. Would you agree? We pursue them. I was married, actually. We men, we would pursue the ladies, the young ladies, uh, to connect with her, to get to know her better, to understand her if we liked her. Uh, there were some other things that come from that, but that was the gist of it. Um, but when approaching this young lady or woman, I want to give you some ways to conduct, conduct yourself when you approach her, okay? When you approach her, there's a way that you should do it, and we're going to go over that, amen? amen? So, approach her with humility. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Tim, can we cut out two to five as I bring them up, if there's a possibility to do that? Okay, all right, well, don't go ahead of yourself. You guys, I know it's too late, but anyway, it's all good. So be humble. First Peter 5, 5 in the NIV version says, In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to the elders. All of you, close yourself with humility toward one another. Because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to what? The humble. So the word already tells us to be humble in everything that we do. Turn with me to Proverbs 29, 23. Or go, go 
Go scrolling down the app. Proverbs 29, 23. It says, a man's pride will bring him low, but he who is of a humble spirit will obtain honor. So men, when you approach this young lady or woman, uh, you should approach her in a manner where your pride doesn't get in the way. Because you know, sometimes we get a little cocky. You know, you feel that you can get any lady or any woman you want. You come up to her and you, you know, you stroll in saying, what's up, girl? Oh, no, that's what I do. That's how we used to do it back in the day. What's up, girl? That still happens? Okay. If they're in the club, you pull them over and go, hey, hey, you should be dancing with me. You catch that? That's how they used to do it. I don't know how they do it today. But anyway, be humble. God will exalt you if you're humble. Um, there was a time in our, well, before we started dating, let me start all over. I was humble, okay? And let me tell you how I was humble. We were on a phone conversation before we went on a date, Pastor Timley and I. And on this phone conversation, she said, um, she, was, she, you know, she was kicking her game. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, do you qualify? Some of you heard the story before. You know, and I said, you know, I stood my ground with humility. And I said, the question isn't do I qualify? The question is, do you qualify? And right then and there, I was exalted. You feel what I'm saying? I was exalted because I was humble. And I stood firmly with her and gave her back what she was giving me to let her know she wasn't just playing with any old joke. You, you feel what I'm saying? And God exalted me right then and there. So how many men would like to be exalted when they're talking to a young lady? Raise your hands. Exactly. Amen. So you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> Baby. All right. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Treat women with respect. They are our equal. And how I can prove that is if you go with me to Genesis 127. Genesis 127. You there? If you're there, say amen. So God, created, so God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. They are our equal. Pastor Timothy referenced uh, Genesis 2.22 last week and explained that a woman was pulled from Adam's, uh, Adam's side. Not above him, not below him. He was, she was his equal. And they are our equal today. So keep that when you approach a young lady, that they are equal. They owe, we owe them respect. Show them care and regard. The kind of care and regard that 1 Corinthians 13 talks about. Showing them love, that godly kind of love that um, shows a woman respect, care, and regard. Women love respectful men. Ladies, do you like respectful men? When you, if you're going to be approached by anyone, you want to be approached by a respectful man. Amen? That's right. 1 Timothy 5, 2 says, treat older women as you would your mother. Older women as you would your mother. And treat younger women with all purity as you would your own sister. Respect her like your mother and your sister. Amen? Because again, women like respectful men. Stay groomed. What, what does that mean? That means uh, keep your hair, and iron your clothes, um, do your nails. You know, work with what you have. You know, if you, if, you, if you don't have an iron, sometimes put your pants under the uh, mattress. That'll flatten them out. Work with what you have. You can even find some good smelling, inexpensive cologne. Especially if you coupon. Why do you think I get the cologne I get? Because my wife be couponing. Amen? So always, and not only that, James, Matt, uh, excuse me, Matthew 6, 16 says, or instructs us, Jesus instructs us, instructs us when fasting to wear perfume, to perfume our heads and our bodies so that no one would know we were fasting. So no one would know that we are fasting, which implies he expects us to do that whether he whether we're fasting or not, we're to always be on ready. Wouldn't you agree, Aaron? You look sharp today. You, you seem like you're ready. So if anything happens afterwards, you're ready, right? 
Amen. So always be on ready. Always stay groomed. Always look good. Think about your hair. Think about how you look, how you want to be perceived. Unfortunately, we live in a world today that that's, I, as you all can tell, we go at based on what people see. That's the world we live in today. They judge us by our appearance. Would you agree? Norca, she has that, that, that green, bluish type of hair. You're judged, aren't you, at times? People perceive you based on your hair. So that's just the society we live in. So stay groomed, young men, stay groomed. Financial awareness. Be responsible with your money. Show her that you're financially responsible. Whatever monies you have, if you're going to take her out on a date, buy her dinner, buy her lunch, wherever you decide to take her, wherever she agrees that she wants to go, at least treat the first on the first meal. Amen. I don't know if you remember, um, you probably don't because this is an old folk song, but it's a, a, it's, it goes like this. No romance without finance. No romance without finance. So the girl's like, if you ain't got no money, we can't talk right now. Amen? We, if you don't have no money to wine and dine me, we don't talk. That's how it was. It was some song back in the 80s or 90s. But it was a, it was a very meaningful fall, song for a lot of women out there. So, anyway, now that you have men, so now that you have her attention and you agree to go out on dating, let's look at what the word dating means and what that consists of. Amen? That's a long definition, but the, one, the reason I wanted this definition because it's so timely as to what uh, we're dealing with today. It says, mo and the most common idea of dating is two people trying out a relationship and exploring whether... They are compatible by going out together in public as a couple who may or may not yet be having sexual relations. This period of dating or courting, courting to woo, to go steady, to go out with a girl. I don't know if you guys, you know, we used to ask the girl on a piece of paper, would you go out with me? Yes or no. That's how we used to do things. So we used to call that going steady. To woo her. Again, hey girl, will you go out with me? You dating anyone else? Going together or going steady is sometimes seen as a precursor to an engagement or with the intention of marriage. And when are we to have sexual relations? When we're married. Amen. And there's so many ways to find a day today. You have Facebook, uh, Craigslist, your buddies hooking you up, your friends hooking you up. You got the old school newspaper that a lot of people don't read today and the personal ads. You have internet chat rooms. You have Christian, uh, the list goes on and on and on, right? Well, let me take you back for a moment. In earlier times, courting was the norm rather than dating. Courtship included strict supervision and protection of the daughter. It was built on the idea of two families coming together and focusing on the father's role, the daughter's father's role, in the way establishing the new family, hence the question, marriage ceremony, who, is, who, gives their, who gives their daughter away? Father. So that was established back then, which paid respect to the father, to the mother, the family, the parents in general. It focused on respect. Nowadays, dating is arranged by everyone else, especially the young people today, with uh, excluding their parents' involvement. So, so, so remember, you guys are hooking each other up. There's no parent involvement. People come over to our house sometimes and we wonder. Brandon's been very good at this, though. But we wonder why children or parents, when they drop off their children, they don't come up to the door to introduce themselves. Or, the, or because of the child or the teenager, what have you, is so used to it themselves, they're hey, mom, or hey, dad, you know, uh, let's talk to Trinity's parents. You know, Trinity's been very good at also because she knows she can't go nowhere without our permission and until we meet our, the parents, until we meet the parents. So take note of this. Dating in the line of God's word is one of the most important processes you'll ever go through. Amen? And, with, and will potentially lead you to the most important investment of your life, which is marriage. So dating in God, line, lines, dating, lining up with God's word, is, and that whole process is very important. Because, again, you're setting yourself up to make the most important investment in your life, which is marriage. Now, the Bible doesn't specifically address the topic of dating. However, it gives us some insight 
on things we should be looking at when we're seeking a spouse. Now, again, you young people, I know you're probably going through a situation where you're dating, but eventually when you date someone, if you're dating someone, you have to begin to look long-term, which is setting yourself up for a new spouse, or for a spouse, excuse me. So I was watching the Steve Harvey show, which is your favorite show, and um, she had, he asked a young lady on the show, what are you looking for when, you, when you're dating a man? What are you looking for? And she said, well, I'm looking for uh, you know, a man with a car, uh, with a house that can take care of me. And you know how black folks do it. He said, what? Are you serious? Is you out your mind? What about love? What about respect? What about kindness? What about regard? Where are those things? And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want, too. He was like, that don't make sense. Now, I see that show sometimes. That's not one of my favorite shows, but that's where I work. They keep this, you know, the, these different channels on, and it always stays on the talk shows. Anyway, so my encouragement is before you start dating, seek God for wisdom, direction, and guidance. It's real simple. Just stop for a moment. Ask God, should I be, go out on this date? Is, he the right, is she the right person? Is he the right person for me? You may not know until you go out on a date, but at least you'll have the unction once you get with God and ask him for wisdom. James 1.5 tells us, if any of you lack wisdom, what should you do? Ask, and it shall be given to you without any fault finding. Amen? Remember, you're not playing a game to win. You're not, you're playing this game to win. Sorry. You are playing this game to win, and with God's help, you will. Amen? Now, winning her over. You're not just winning any over, a young lady over, any woman over. You think about your future. So start now. Uh, so let's keep it real. When we are dating someone, we're dating for someone that we want to look forward to spending the rest of our life with. We want to be, in the, we want to be with them for the rest of our life. We don't just want a boyfriend or girlfriend for just the sake of it. Amen? We're not just fooling around here. When dating, you want to find someone you want to be with for the rest of your life. Now, let me add, if, 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 if you're not committed to dating, if you don't want to date and you're not committed to the relationship, that's okay. Then resolve to just be friends. If you're not in the mood to date, you don't want to date, or you're not committed to this person that you're dating, have care for them. Let them know that, you know, at this time, I don't want to date, you know, for these reasons. Or... You know, I'm just not in the mood to dating. Whatever the case may be, if you're not ready to commit, it's okay. You don't have to be committed to everyone you're dating. Amen? Here are some guidelines that uh, God has given us when committing someone to date. Number one, God comes first in everything. We serve a jealous, a jealous God. Galatians 5.20 and, and Colossians 3.5. Galatians 5.20 in Colossians 3, 5, talks about not putting idols before God. Don't rely on someone to make you happy or to fulfill you. Amen? And for those of us, of us that watched um, God's Not Dead, remember the, the, the part where Pastor Dave in that movie, he said, don't, he said, to the wrong person you'll never have worth, but to the right person you'll mean everything. To the right person you'll mean everything. You won't have to overwork yourself. Amen? No one deserves to be put over God. Number two, God instructs us to pray about everything. Philippians 4, 6 says it's very clear. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Prayer is the lifeblood of a believer. Petition God for the type of person you, you desire. So make that list. Remember Pastor Timberley said, you know, when you go somewhere and you, you, back in the day you used to have pictures of your kids, you pull out your wallet and your purse and that, it come rolling out. That's how Pastor Timberley's list was when she dealt with me. I was like, man. So it wasn't her, it was about me if I wanted to go down this road. So make the list and be reasonable with the list. You know, and get some direction from God. And, and, and as for the men, God has given us a hint already. We should looking, seeking for a Proverbs 31 woman. Women should be raising their daughters to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Someone makes an excellent wife and is worth far more than jewels. And women, when you're looking for that Ephesians 5.25 man, make sure that 
has a personal relationship with Christ. So he can love you as Christ loved the church. If he doesn't have a personal relationship with Christ, you can't expect him to love you any other way. All the other ways except how Christ loved the church. So make sure when you're looking for your Ephesians 5.25, that's Ephesians 5.25, man, that he loves you like Christ loved the church. Amen? In 2 Corinthians 6.14, God instructs us to not be unequally yoked. Now that has a whole lot of meaning, which we're not going to get into, but re resolve to allow God to choose your mate. Resolve to allow God to choose your mate. Let him do all the work. Pressure's off of you. Put it in God's hands. Let him give you the unction of who you should be. Number four, God also instructs us to live a life of good character. Turn with me to, to uh, Proverbs 21, 1. Proverbs 21, 22, 1, excuse me. It says, a good name is rather to be chosen than a great than great riches and loving favor, favor rather than silver and gold. Rather than silver and gold. So if you purpose to live a life with character, whoever you're seeking, they should have that trait also. Character with character. Amen? Don't just uh, choose the, a person because the way they dress, the way they look, um, they're the best athlete, um, you know, they have a lot of money. Money does not determine one's character. So no matter how much money they have, that does not determine their character. You know what determines their character? What happens behind closed doors when they're alone? What are they doing? And I don't mean nothing weird, but what are they doing behind? What are they doing at home? You know, what, when, when nobody's looking, that determines your character. And God will lead you to the one that you need to be that has the character that matches up with yours. Number five, God instructs us to stay pure. Ephesians 5, 3 says, let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place with God's people. Are we not God's people? We are God's people, amen? amen. Make sure your, pur your purity is your priority. Write that down. Make sure your purity is your priority. Your purity is your priority. The purity of your relationship is important. So whoever you're with, express to them your purity, male or female, is your priority. Resolve to have physical passion, physical passion for marriage. Resolve to have physical passion for marriage. Think about that. Physical passion. God created it. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing when two, when a man and woman are experiencing that together when they're married. Reserving physical passion for marriage can be challenging in today's time, especially if you become attached, attracted to someone physically. If you're lusting after them because of the way they look. That is a challenge. So to avoid those things... I'm going to make some suggestions. And the first suggestion I'm going to make is ask for permission. What does that mean? Ask for permission means if you know a young lady that you're dating is under the covering of their parents, you should be introducing yourself to their parents and asking for permission to take their daughter out on the date. Yeah. Trip knows it. <laughs> ask for permission. <laughs> Period. I don't have one, but you don't have to say it. A friend of mine uh, who I haven't talked to in 20 years, I found out he's a pastor in Georgia. And he said, and it's so funny how God works, but just a few days ago he told me the story. It was so fitting for this message. He said that um, his son was going out on, the, on the, uh, going to the prom. And uh, his father said, well, you know, how long, you long, this lady, how, how long have you known this young lady? Uh, not too long, but we, you know, we're just going out on the prom. It's all good. He said, well, 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 hold up. Did you meet the parents? Did you ask the father? He said, no, I didn't think to. You know, she, we like each other. We're going out on a date. Why not check with her parents? He said, no, hold up. 
I taught you better than that, son. I trained you up to do everything in decent and order. So if you want this eight of yours to be successful, going to the prom to be successful, then you have to ask her parents. So he got in the car, he drove over to the house, the father did, and keeping a balance there, and he's, again, he, he's pastoring, but he's also the boy's father. So the father drove the son over to the, their parents. Conversation went well. Uh, the daughter's father gave him the keys to the BMW with the top down. They strolled to the prom. prom. They came home in a timely manner. The next day, the, the young lady comes up in the same car, and the uh, son goes, up, we're going to the movies. He said, well, did you check with her parents? He said, well, dang, boss, I got to check with her parents about everything. He said, but I raised you to do everything in decent order. So he said, yeah, I guess. So they went out in the car and stayed for 30 minutes. They didn't even go make it to the movies. Because apparently she didn't ask or they didn't ask the parents. So he said, hey, I can't go to the movies unless we check with your father and mother, period. So make sure you ask permission. Go in a group when you date. Go in a group. If you're going to do any dating one-on-one, you may want to consider driving separate cars. I'm just saying, drive separate cars to the movie. Drive separate cars to dating. When she gets out of the car, open up the door. Show her some respect and regard. You don't have, she doesn't have to be driving. She could park somewhere close to you. You can say, I'm going to meet you there. You can, get you can go there before she gets there and be respectful and kind and open up the door. But consider driving two different cars because what? You avoid the possibility of spending the night. Uh-oh. Spending the night. About the, uh. No. Don't spend the night. Don't put yourself in an uncompromising situation. A buddy of mine named Mark, good looking. He, he came to church before. Good looking, brother. He works out. He's buff. You know, he comes to, uh, he comes to me and shares these stories with me. And uh, he says, Drake. And I, you know, only certain brothers can call me Drake. And he's one of them. So he says, Dre, man, you know, I've been dating for a while, and every couple I want to date, or am I, I'm dating, wants me to go over their house, or they want to come over my house. Down that road before, I'm like, no, I can't do that. I cannot do that. My flesh is weak. I know what's going to happen. So don't drive. If you're going to go out, find a way to avoid going over his house or her house. Amen. Sexual relationships are made for what? Yeah. Amen. No long-term kissing and touching. Kissing feels good. Touching feels good. But no long-term long -term touching and kissing. Do you feel me on that? Learn to control yourself. <laughs> be mindful when you kiss. Who's take, keeping time and who's going to be able to tell you stopping if you're kissing once? You kissing twice, you kissing three times, things happen. People feel out. Exactly, we in church. That happens. That's an emotional feeling that God has given us for marriage. So when you're kissing, be sure to control yourself. Amen? Amen. If you're going to kiss, you find it necessary to kiss, make it short and sweet. I'll see you tomorrow. Kiss on the cheek. If it's on the lips, do it real quick. No exchanging. And number one, which is number five on my list, this church loves this word, accountability. Find someone that's going to keep you accountable. Why do I say that? Because if you slip, if you fall, they can help you get back on track. They can pray with you. They can say, you know, God, we're, we serve a God of many chances. So because of that, if you slip and fall, it's okay. We're striving not to do it again. So you know what? Uh, Gino, I, you know, man, I went on this date, and I was kissing her, and I got aroused. We didn't have to do that, but I was about to. You know, advise me on what I should do next time. Well, did you listen to Pastor Andre's uh, message? They gave you some practical, strategic ways that you can avoid that from happening next time. Amen? Exactly. Thank you. And, and that person that holds you accountable, now take it a step further. That could be your pastor, youth pastor, your friend, your friend in Christ is important so they can instruct you accordingly. 
Um, and if you're uncomfortable with your parents, hopefully you're not, but if you are, find somebody in the church. Find an adult that you can go to in church. We're here for each other. We're not professing uh, the stuff for fun. If got a problem, he should be able to come to me. I'm not on the worship team, but he should be able to come to me. Amen? He should feel comfortable enough to come to me. He should feel comfortable enough to go to Gino, Pastor Gino, Pastor Grady. Any young man that's struggling with something, we're here for you. And if we're not, you need to come tell us. Amen? You come check us. Say, hey, Pastor said you're here for me. <laughs> Woo! So write, you guys writing this down? So ask for permission. Go out in the group. Drive separate car. No spending the night. No long-term kissing and touching. If you must kiss again, tap. Tap that lips. Tap that lip and have accountability partner. Amen. So uh, is that any help? You know, <laughs> it is a little late, for some, but, but just think how much of a blessing you can be to someone else right now. Just think how much of a blessing you can be um, of a help right now. So, uh, so in closing, um, thank you. God is the creator of all things, and he's the architect of you in dating. So don't depend on a dating profile to find, to find your woman. Lean on and trust on God, and no matter what the world tells you, if you place God first in your life and do not waver, you will attract a godly woman and a godly man. That's someone you can't live without. That's someone you can't live without. Amen? Praise you, Father. I get up here and my stuff is quick. I'm like, I, should, I should be, I was thinking maybe I should ask something else, but let me be quiet. So anyway, that's, a, that's closing. I hope that has blessed you. Uh, it's, it's blessed me, you know, so thank you very much. Um, and we're going to get ready for communion. So if you just bow your heads.